Hi everyone, it's Bruce back again. Uh, welcome back to my channel. I've been offline for uh, a little while now. Uh, perhaps you can hear in my voice, I've been rather unwell and laid out in bed for a few days. Um, it's this winter weather, a, a kind of unseasonably cold um, spell that we're having here in, in, in London at the moment. So that put me slightly under the weather. Anyway, um, it's good to be back. This will probably be my final posting for this year, 2022. Um, so a kind of uh, preemptive Merry Christmas to you all and Happy New Year. Um, as uh, some of you may know, uh, CJC Vinyl Christian over in America held a competition six at six. So he asked um, competitors to put in six entries. Now this meant six albums that were released when you, the competitor, were six years old, which I, you know, threw my hat into the ring over. And uh, luckily, hey presto, I won that competition. So uh, thanks again, uh, a shout out to Christian there at CJC Vinyl. I'll show uh, the album which I bought with the winning competition money in, in just a moment. Um, and uh, yes, uh, I've got a few other new pieces in. Well, they're not new. They're purchases I made, in fact, from charity shops uh, round and about. Um, nothing very rare, nothing I'm sure that I'm even very interested in, but I couldn't resist them at the price. Um, I think with the exception of one, they were 50 pence, so you can't go far wrong with that. And they're all in pretty good shape. So anyway, let's get started. Um, first of all, the album which I bought with Christian's uh, winning entry money, um, was. Uh, it took me a while to find something suitable. Um, I've noticed prices have kind of been creeping up a bit. Um, the second hand market. Um, in the end, I went for something actually brand new. It's a reissue. And the artist is called Tia Blake. Uh, you may or may not have heard of her. She was an American emigre who lived for some time in Paris uh, in the early 70s. And uh, this was, in fact, uh, her only recording. It was uh, her only album that was released in her lifetime. I believe she died about seven years ago. Um, this reissue is on this uh, Ici Bientôt. It was it was only ever issued in um, in France. There it is. It's a kind of reissue of the original label, which was a different um, French record um, label. Um, and it comes with, you know, it's got it's got some nice notes there, some liner notes about opens up into a sort of four page book let me show you there um about her life uh in music which wasn't a very long one as i say this being her only um recorded album very fine folk singer um a very light sort of lilting voice uh not not stylized not um i do find it you know it can grate a bit female folk vocals for me um, these are just standards and a, a few covers that she does. Uh, of particular interest to me, I love the song Hangman, which is quite haunting, you know, even the title. And uh, this song Single Girl, very sort of, you know, it's very um, dreamy kind of, um, almost soporific delivery she has. Uh, musicians are okay, you know, uh, it ain't, you know, it's not Davy Graham, let me put it like that. You know, it's not... Um, you know, fantastic sort of virtuoso folk guitar. It's okay, it's competent, it's it's a decent backing, you know, given, who knows, you know, this is perhaps one of those imponderables, given a, a different setting, perhaps her career would have taken off, I don't know, but anyway, um, so anyway, that's the first one. So uh, that's my winning entry um, purchase there. Um, let's get on to the others. This one wasn't 50 pence. I bought this for what, all of £1.50. Uh, it's Joan Armour Trading's first album. Uh, this one's an, a reissue. Uh, I think it, this one originally was released around 72, something like that. I haven't even had a chance to play this yet. This one's on Cube Records. 
Uh, this is slightly later press, probably about 74, 75. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's the only record I've got by her. I kind of like her. I'm not a massive fan, but I'm happy to have that for that sort of price. Uh, sorry, let me just rearrange my stuff here. The next one coming up, which I was really excited about at 50 pence, was uh, this Jerry Mulligan. It's an original. Uh, it's uh, Again, I haven't had time to play it, what with being ill, etc. This is a live album. It's got Zoot Sims on it. Uh, I think it was recorded in Europe and, and in the USA. You can see that it's got a lovely old, I'll put it up there a bit closer there. You can hope that went in focus. Lovely old gold lettering, Vogue, uh, sorry, not Vogue, Verve. Um, you know, UK obviously pressed, I think, at HMV, you know, EMI, I should say. Um, but anyway, uh, a, a really nice one for 50p. Uh, on to the others. I got this. Uh, I probably won't hang on to this. Uh, never, sorry, <laughs> never a fan. Perhaps you can drop it down in the comments. Perhaps some of you are. Um, this is, yeah, Joan Byers. I don't know which album it is. It's probably um, a sort of <coughs> mid-60s, I think. Uh, fourth or fifth album released. But it's an original. Uh, is it a stereo? I think it is, yeah. And it's in pretty good shape for 50 pence. Uh, I also got this, which is Nelson Schmelson, classic album. <coughs> Interesting, it's the only album I've got now on the old, um, can you see it there? The Dynaflex label. So, you know, these are very wobbly, um, sort of loved and loathed in equal measure, RCA Dynaflex. I think they brought it in as a measure because the uh, possibly the um, oil shortages of the, you know, 73 oil crisis, you know, uh, made manufacture of L vinyl, which they put a lot of oil into, a little bit, you know, um, tight with their margins. So they introduced this anyway. So that for 50p, I was happy about. Um, I got a couple of bread albums. There's this one here. I've never owned a bread album. Again, this is an original. It's got all the inners with it there. <coughs> Picture of the band. Um, I love the song Guitar Man, which is what this uh, album, I think it's the title as well, the title track. These are the original Electra labels, uh, Butterfly labels. Uh, it looks fine, you know, it's had a little bit of play, but it looks quite passable. Uh, another Bread album here, which I believe, what's this one called? Lost Without Your Love. Don't know it. Don't know if there were any hits on here. I believe this was their final studio recording before they uh before they disbanded um again it's on the electro label i think that's a quite late one probably 76 77 something like that uh a lot of this stuff was done away with of course by you know punk was just around the corner uh yeah it's a gate vocal again it's in five shape 50p you can't go wrong um getting near the end now an artist that I don't listen to and I know very little about, kind of too poppy for me. I think this is a reissue. Anyway, it's a Belinda Carlisle record on Virgin. It's got the inner there. Uh, this looks to me, again, you can drop it down in the comments, looks to me a little bit like a reissue, that grey label Virgin uh, record. So it's probably a slightly later press. I don't know when this came out, probably late 80s. Um, and I got a couple at the end here of Moody Blues. There we are. That's um, the, a question of balance. The only song I know on here, of course, is that title track, Question, which I do like. Again, I think this is a slightly later press. You can see there the Purple Threshold um, Moody Blues label. Uh, it, you know, the cover's a little bit... Mm, a little bit buckled. I don't know if you can see that. It's not really flat. I think the vinyl's okay. Oh, and I've just noticed in here, uh, on, loading in this jacket is quite hard because of the buckle on it. It's obviously been left in a damp environment. What have we got here? Oh, wow, we get them far out, man. <laughs> we get a kind of psychedelic picture of them there. And it looks like uh, the lyrics to the... To the numbers on that album. I haven't had a chance to play any of these, but I will do. 
Uh, and lastly, there's this one, <coughs> which is, uh, I assume, was that an eighth album? I'm not sure, Octave. Um, it's a late 70s. I vaguely remember this one coming out. Um, they had Driftwood, which I think was a minor hit for them. Uh, one of their later hits uh, on that album. Uh, I'll show you in a moment. Sorry, this is always a bit fiddly with these gatefold sleeves. It's, uh, yeah, I've got this picture here of them coming in through a door and out through the door there. I don't know what the message is, but anyway. Uh, and very uh, briefly, lastly, a, a, a few singles. Uh, these two I played 25p for. Uh, this is actually quite interesting. I didn't know what it was when I bought it. And it says number one theme. Uh, I haven't got my glasses. Who's this one by? Let me just get them on. This is by... The John Shakespeare Orchestra, whoever they may be. Yeah, that one, uh, and there's a, there we are. It's on Decker. You can see the, the logo on there, though, in the picture there. It's uh, British European Airways, isn't it? BEA. Don't know if any of you are old enough to remember them. Um, Pre-British Airways. Interestingly, this is arranged by, and there's a picture of him there, Quincy Jones. So it came out in 69. I think it's all sort of semi-collectible, that one. Lastly, uh, we got two here, another 25p purchase. We got Jackie Lee singing Rupert the Bear. Uh, you know, children's British TV programme there. I vaguely remember it when I was a kid. Wasn't really a fan, to be honest, but um, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. And lastly, and perhaps most interestingly, I think I paid all of a pound for this, um, uh, his master's voice kind of EP uh, of sound effects. And this one here is, let me hold the sleeve up there so you can see better. It's spaceships and ghosts. Spooky. There we are, and it's on the nice old HMV label. Um, so yeah, that one cost me a pound. Haven't had a chance to play it yet, but it's a real curio, so I couldn't resist it. Anyway, um, thanks for listening. Uh, do subscribe and like, and I shall see you in 2023, everyone. Bye.